Following a vote on the Archaeosoup Facebook page, today's In Focus comes from the Orkney Islands and the Neolithic settlement of Skara Bray, located in the Bay of Scale. For many years, the bay was a pristine but unremarkable inlet on a Scottish island. However, in the winter of 1850, a severe storm hit Britain, killing 200 people, and in the Bay of Scale, it tore into a grassy knoll. The next day, locals found that the earth had been stripped back, revealing a village below, albeit without roofs. Soon stories spread of treasure buried within. And in 1913, the site was excavated by an unknown party with shovels. Who knows what they took away, but they almost certainly didn't find treasure. In 1924, another severe storm caused damage to the exposed village, and it was decided that it should be properly shored up and investigated. Enter Professor Veer Gordon Child, then of the University of Edinburgh, pictured here with his teddy. In 1927, Child visited the site for the first time, and soon excavations were underway. Despite occasionally unpleasant weather, these excavations were thorough, and resulted in the first proper plan of the village which would become known as Scara Bray. This excavation was followed up by more work in the 1970s, with the site gaining the attention of the national press. Indeed, around this time, it even received a royal visit from the Queen and Prince Philip. All told, archaeologists had gleaned that this site had been used by people who employed grooved ware pottery. This type of pot came into Scotland with the Neolithic, and arrived just before Scarabray's inception, around 3000 BC. But more than this, investigations had soon revealed the remarkable architecture of Scarabray, effectively dry stone walling sunk into pre-existing midden mounds. And moreover, this carefully constructed village revealed that people's lives had been ordered and even comfortable to an extent not previously suspected. For example, each of the seven dwellings has a large bed on the right-hand side of the entrance, and a smaller bed on the left-hand side. It was noted that this ordered comfort was possibly reflected in the local area by a tradition whereby up until the beginning of the 20th century, the husband gained a larger bed than his wife. This observation was further borne out with the discovery of beads and also paint pots in many of the smaller beds on the left-hand side of the entrance. It was thought that these paint pots containing red ochre were associated with the house and also ceremonies of birth and death. Other objects were discovered in other parts of these dwellings, including finely made Neolithic jewellery, elegantly carved ivory needles, and also curious stone balls of an unknown purpose but a fascinating texture. Similarly crafted ivory needles, along with carved stone balls, have also been uncovered in another part of the British Isles, namely County Meath in the Republic of Ireland and the Boyne Valley region around New Grange. As the old saying goes, home is where the hearth is, and it was certainly the case at Scara Bray. The fire was in the centre of each dwelling, and undoubtedly played a central part in social life. It was Veer Gordon Child's belief that peat readily available in the area had fuelled these fires. However, analysis shows that peat did not form in the area until after Scara Bray was abandoned. Therefore, the fires were probably fuelled by driftwood, animal dung and seaweed. Fascinatingly, the dwellings contain a number of stone-built pieces of furniture, including storage cupboards, boxes, seats and shelves. This reveals an organised and ordered way of life within these dwellings, and some of the boxes appear to have been sealed watertight using clay. This innovation could have been used for washing, or even for storing live limpets within the house, ready to eat, along with the other foods that these Neolithic people were farming and gathering. What were probably very modern conveniences are, however, outdone at Scarabray by a network which traverses the entire site. I speak of a series of drainage channels which connect the homes and also encourage water to leave the site in a convenient place. This in turn allowed each dwelling to have a primitive flushing toilet. Such luxuries are usually afforded in the minds of many to those famous bathroom engineers, the Romans. So, Far from basic and remote, Scara Bray was a modern engineering marvel. And until the climate changed, for a little over 500 years, people lived ordered and sophisticated lives within its walls. If you were lucky enough to be invited in, you'd be instantly aware of the tidy, organised and socially significant order of each house as you gathered around the fire. 
However, around 2500 BC, probably during a terrible storm, the village succumbed to the elements and was buried by sand, wind and sea. 4,000 years later, those very same elements would reveal the village once more, and ultimately reveal the story of how people in the Neolithic made a good life for themselves on the rugged and windswept shores of the Orkney Islands.